Hello, um, this is another tutorial. We're going to explain a little bit of maps uh, that can be applied to uh, any material. How can we get the transparency map? You know? Black equals transparent, white equals opaque. How do we apply a map to an object? And how afterwards the material responds correctly to that code? Of black equals transparency and white equals opaque and also how the shadows correspond to that level of transparencies so let's go ahead uh, we have in the scene I have a sphere a plane for the floor and I have place in the settings uh, the following uh, well this is the one two three steps the classic so I went to production here uh, didn't change anything else. I went to direct lighting. I created a physical, um, sorry, an image based lighting. I also pressed final gathering to give it a better um, final gathering resolution. And that's pretty much it. I didn't change uh, factors such as resolution or etc. You, whenever you make a render, you should change this by yourself. No? Okay, so uh, I have placed in the dome um, and next the uh, image that I have which is uh, an exterior image you guys have this in, uh, um, in blackboard so you should be able to get an image if not go to the web and just say download hdri hdri image high resolution just place the folder uh, check the folder and place it there and you will be able to have it in a dome illuminating the scene and uh, the objects will reflect that dome. No? I don't think it's quite so forward. I appreciate I have done uh, very basic things. Let me put this down. Uh, I click graph network. So um, there we go. We have a bling and we have a lambda. The bling, I place it to the sphere. I change uh, the color and the span this to blue. That's the only thing I have done, and the lambda is by default a grace. So that's it. I didn't do anything else. Oh, sorry, I did place a, a light, a spotlight, and I place it correctly where I want it. And what I did is select the light, and I did change. I remember well, no, not even the corner. I don't think I changed anything here. I, not even the. Yes, I placed the. Ray trace shadows. So, for the purpose of the of this uh, tutorial, you should use trace shadows. I actually recommend using these shadows almost always. It's much more powerful than um, depth map shadows. No? So, yeah, go ahead and check that for your light. Um, and let's go ahead and start changing a couple things. First of all, I'm going to render and we're going to see the problems that we have. Pause it normally in our locations or select areas to run it. Um, and this is what we get a basic bling uh, which contains the, the default reflections, it's reflecting on the dome. Uh, we have a shadow, we have told again the light to emit use uh, ray trace shadows. I haven't changed any factor there. And I haven't changed neither a radius, which could have done a you know, classic uh, um, diffusion or kind of a gradient resolution of the shadow image. It's straightforward what you get with, uh, with the components that I have explained. Um, so let's see, let's apply a map, black and white map, to the object. And let's say, hey, I want some areas to be totally transparent, and I want the shadows to follow. So here are the things. I'm going to save this image by pressing this button. Uh, that allows me to save that image here, and we'll be able to go back and check it out. Minimize. Uh, what we have to do in the upper shade is basically select the material, and in transparency, for bling, again, we're working with bling, I'm spraying it around. MIA material X, which is slightly different. Uh, we have to press the 
checkbox here, select the file. There, the files come, we select the file folder, and I have something prepared. I think it's called yes here. It's a basically an image, black and white, of a uh, you know just uh, like code. I call them code in my folder because they're black and white images that I can play afterwards. I have many of them. So it's JPEG, um, which is recommendable for these cases. And you know the better resolution, the better the this definition of the line it is, but it's going to take longer as well. So JPEG is good. Open. If we zoom in here to the material itself, it seems like it's working already. Um, now let's see what happens if I render. I'm going to open the render view and select the area here. It's contained shadow and shadows and material. And I'm going to render just that box so we don't spend so much time. And very fast, we're going to see that it's pretty much not going to work. So we have to do something extra to the material. So let's go to the upper shade, uh, select the material, and one of the things that let me reduce this that we have to do is selecting the file shader here, the, the file shader. It's it's going down to color balance and check alpha is luminance. Seems like nothing happens but immediately if we render the same box we're going to see that precisely there is uh, transparency when we apply to it but also we see some other problems that we have to fix this takes forever I think we can tell already what the problem is. The problem is that the area that we want transparent, which is the black area in our image, it respects some conditions of the material in this case, and we need to focus on the uh, on the specific uh, part of the material, which is the specular color. If we move this, and remember this grayscale here, if we move this down, you can tell the difference here, there's no specular to that versus this maximum. So we need to change this because the transparent area is giving us specular specularity as well. So there's several ways, the <laughs> straight fast ways uh, with the middle mouse uh, click to this guy and send it to specular color that will pretty much say do not give me specular color wherever there is white huh? so in theory if we render the same box um, we're gonna have uh, that problem solved this is again in uh, semi-theory why in theory uh, well again white is no specularity but um, black is um, the opposite, so we need the, the grayscale to whatever is not um, white. Uh, for that, I normally go to Photoshop. I have this one, I save it as, call it like gray, say okay, say okay, and sometimes I just go to uh, levels, so an image and levels, you probably know that, and just make it a the similar grays term as you can see I'm changing it. Okay. Say OK, save it. And go back to Ma Maya. Uh, there's a way of duplicating this. We have to duplicate that with uh, connections to network. So it creates the same image but linked to the network. And now to this uh, material we can apply this image to specularity and it's now the same so we can go to the image go to the folder and just go to the folder where we have that uh, grayscale one say open and go to the material it has changed the specularity of the area that is not transparent uh, changing the image grayness we will be able to change 
this peculiarity. So now we have a control of transparency plus um, a control of this peculiarity by uh, changing the grayness of this uh, object. So I'm going to render last time uh, that little box in the little bit more. And I'll see what it looks like. Now, the shadow, it, it is respecting, as you can see, um, the mapping as well, the transparency light goes through the transparent areas as if there was no material. Now, if you have global illumination, uh, you the shadows will be um, not respecting it, and that requires some of the changes that I was going to uh, later on. Okay, so uh, but I think it, it pretty much fulfills the uh, requirements. So I was planning in another little tutorial. Uh, this what we have to change in MIA material X uh, to get the same level of transparency. Okay, so great. Uh, hope you enjoyed.